Hi, my name is Tito Tecklenburg. I'm a managing director at uh, Golden Capital Partners, and I'm co-heading uh, together with my colleague, uh, Bernd Schumacher, our infrastructure investment team. Uh, I have about uh, 20 years of uh, direct infrastructure investment expertise, um, particularly in the development and um, investment in um, public infrastructure, so private public private partnerships um, here in Europe, uh, in Australia, and in North America. And um, Golding uh, Capital Partners is an asset manager for alternative uh, investments, and we have uh, more than 11 billion uh, euros of assets under management across the three asset classes, buyout, private debt, and um, infrastructure. And infrastructure is our um, largest asset class, and we currently have um, our fourth uh, generation fund of funds and our second generation co-investment fund um, in fundraising. And once fully raised, um, those two um, funds should bring our assets under management uh, in the asset class infrastructure to about five billion. Generally speaking, a co-investment fund offers institutional investors the possibility to get direct exposure to um, a portfolio of assets that are actively managed by different primary fund managers. Um, the asset manager for the co-investment fund um, sources these assets from its network amongst infrastructure funds or primary uh, funds, and these um, Primary funds on occasion offer co-investments to their LPs and sometimes other investors um, to maintain certain limits within their investment policy um, and um, or reduce the exposure to a, a specific asset um, for other reasons. Um, so taking a step back, um, when investing through fund vehicles, institutional investors have the choice between uh, funds of funds, primary funds, and co-investment funds. Um, a fund of funds offers an incredibly broad um, diversification. When you take, for example, Golding uh, Infrastructure Fund of Funds, uh, they typically hold um, about 15, 16 um, primary funds. And each primary fund invests in about 10 to 15 assets. So with a single infrastructure fund of funds, you get exposure to anywhere between 150 and 250 um, individual infrastructure assets. So consequently, the performance of a single asset um, has only a, a minimal contribution to the performance of the overall um, fund. Um, what we think is really important is not to undermine or counteract the um, idea of, of general diversification by building a portfolio that um, is very um, specialized with uh, specialist fund managers that only invest in um, a specific sector or a specific country. Uh, we may add one or two of these specialist funds for specific portfolio construction um, reasons, but the remainder of the infrastructure fund of funds portfolio consists of broadly diversified um, generalist infrastructure funds. And these infrastructure funds um, invest across the various sectors of uh, the asset class, so transportation, energy and utilities, digital infrastructure, and social infrastructure. They also invest in various countries in Europe or North America, or some even have a, a global mandate. Um, and in accordance with our risk strategy um, or portfolio strategy, we then choose funds that pursue either a core or a core plus or a value add um, strategy. And so this very broad risk diversification um, achieves a very stable performance with low volatility in either direction. So that's the fund of fund product. Alternatively, um, institutional investors can also build their own portfolio in accordance with their um, own investment strategy. Um, as mentioned, these, um, these primary funds um, that they will put in their portfolio um, will pursue a specific um, strategy with respect to um, sectors, geographies, and risk return segments. Um, and each primary fund will um, expose or give the, the uh, investor exposure to um, about 10 to 15 assets that are actively managed by the uh, respective uh, fund manager. Now, a co-investment fund combines the um, primary funds approach of building a concentrated portfolio of 10 to 15 assets um, with the fund of funds idea of broad diversification. And that's what I find really exciting about this, this product. Um, with this, within this one portfolio, you get broad diversification across sectors, geographies, 
um, risk return segments and fund managers. And as mentioned, the, the asset manager sources these um, uh, co-investments from the primary fund managers that it has you know, very deep and trusted relationships with, mostly through the investments for its uh, fund of funds or managed accounts. And so there are already um, trusted relationships with these primary uh, fund managers um, and confidence in their ability to manage these assets successfully. And this, I think, is a really attractive proposition to investors also from a, a fee perspective. Um, when a fund of funds gets charged fees by the fund managers whose funds it invests in, um, and then charges its own investors uh, fees too. Um, so while with the fund of funds, the price for this broad diversification is an additional fee layer, um, the co-investment fund only has one uh, fee layer as most, if not all of the co-investments are done on no fee, no carry basis. Um, what is really important for an infrastructure fund, uh, uh, co-investment fund um, is that the responsible uh, fund manager or asset manager has a large enough team with direct um, infrastructure investment um, expertise that can do a thorough due diligence on each asset. Um, Co-investment processes often follow a very condensed uh, timeline. Um, and without this direct investment expertise, um, it becomes too much of a challenge to work effectively through that process and know what to look out for during the analysis. Um, Infrastructure, when you compare it with private equity, um, is still a relatively young asset class. Um, at the same time, it has huge momentum because it has delivered on its promise of um, solid and stable returns, you know, twice now in a crisis back in 2008 and last year. And as more and more money is being allocated to this asset class and investors are becoming more and more familiar with it and also um, looking for more direct exposure to infrastructure assets, um, a more differentiated product offering is the logical next step. And a co-investment fund slots in nicely um, between the highly diversified fund of funds and the primary funds. Um, and we're certainly uh, seeing even more interest now in our second um, co-investment uh, fund um, than you know, for our first uh, 350 million uh, euro co-investment fund a few years ago. And so we're uh, hoping to close the second fund um, uh, early next year at uh, around 450 million euro. Well, maybe it's good to clarify first that um, although I've explained that a um, co-investment fund offers you know, broader diversification than the primary fund across the same number of assets, we're not positioning the co-investment fund as a competition to the primary funds. Um, it is much more a complementary product um, and one that offers passive investments in infrastructure assets alongside uh, trusted um, primary fund managers that actively uh, manage you know, these assets. So having said that, I can think of two reasons um, why um, an, interest, uh, an investor um, might be interested in a dedicated um, infrastructure co-investment fund. Um, one is that the investor has been um, investing in infrastructure fund of funds uh, for some years now and is, is now sort of ready to take the next step and add a bit more concentrated exposure to um, its portfolio. Um, don't forget the, the asset class is still fairly young and there are many investors out there who are exactly at this point now. Um, and the co-investment fund offers uh, them this um, more concentrated exposure um, to infrastructure assets without limiting the strategy to you know, one fund manager or um, one uh, um, geography even, uh, or a risk return segment. Um, another type of investor that could be interested in a co-investment fund is an investor that does build its own portfolio of primary funds um, and is looking for more co-investments or direct um, exposure to uh, infrastructure assets but does not have the resources or the direct investment expertise to perform the due diligence on uh, these assets. Um, as institutional investor, with the co-investment fund, you not only get that direct exposure to um, these assets, but also the comfort from the fact that um, each asset has gone 
through uh, two separate due diligence processes, one with the primary fund manager and one uh, with the uh, co-investment fund manager. Um, so investors who are looking for more direct exposure to infrastructure assets and do not have the relationship with the primary fund managers and or um, the, the, ex the resources to perform the due diligence um, for the assets are probably the ones most interested in the co-investment fund. Well, considering the investors that would typically be looking at an infrastructure co-investment fund and considering um, where they stand in their evolution of investors in this asset class, it's safe to say that Western Europe, Northern Europe, um, North America, and OECD countries outside of Europe and North America are the attractive regions for um, co-investment in, uh, in infrastructure. Emerging markets um, likely do not fit the risk profile of these investors, and in addition, um, may not um, off, be able to offer the deal flow um, given the enterprise values uh, there. Um, similarly, in, with respect to the sectors, um, the same sectors um, are um, in general attractive for co-investments that are attractive for the infrastructure funds or the broadly diversified um, in, um, the infrastructure fund of funds or the broadly diversified um, uh, primary funds. Um, so uh, transportation, um, energy and utilities, digital infrastructure and social infrastructure. So having said that, uh, co-investments in social infrastructure tend to be rare um, because these assets are a bit smaller um, and do not really create a limitation issue for the primary fund managers. Digital infrastructure is certainly where we've seen the most deal flow um, over the past 18 months, and I expect that to be the case also going forward. Um, valuations have to be you know, closely um, analyzed here, just given the momentum that the sector is experiencing. Um, but there's so much need for investment in the digital infrastructure space that we still expect um, to see you know, very attractive co-investment opportunities in that space. Um, energy transition assets, um, so whether renewables or uh, some other assets that support the uh, transition to a, a more sustainable uh, energy world, are the other hot sector um, at this point. Um, they, they really offer a very broad um, spectrum of, of co-investment opportunities, uh, from um, co-investments in solar parks via um, distributed energy generation um, assets to uh, development platforms of uh, for re renewables that are being transformed into independent power producers. Um, in the end, however, you know, we at Golding would really believe in this broad divers diversification that I was talking about at the beginning. Um, and although our deal flow would probably currently allow it, we do not want to build a co-investment portfolio that just consists of digital infrastructure assets. Um, this Diversification has served as well in the COVID crisis, and it will serve as well in any future crisis as well. And so I'm actually excited to you know, see, for example, also transportation assets um, uh, back in, in the co-investment um, field and also hoping for uh, continued uh, deal flow in the logistics um, sector. And nowadays, you know, we see about 50 um, co-investment opportunities um, each year. And with our disciplined approach to portfolio construction, we close on more or less five transactions per year. Um, and with all that, um, we'll ultimately build a co-investment for portfolio that's nicely diversified across segments, geographies, um, uh, sectors, and um, fund managers. Co-investments allow the asset manager uh, to apply an ESG screening to each asset to a much larger extent than, for example, in the um, case of a fund of funds. In the fund of funds context, um, the ESG screening focuses on the primary fund manager um, and its ESG approach to um, infrastructure investment. For the co-investment fund, we ourselves build the portfolio and we decide which asset fits into the portfolio from an ESG perspective. As a first step, um, we consider 
um, whether the assets purpose and the services it provides um, fit with our understanding of sustainable infrastructure. Um, examples for key questions here are, um, does the asset have a positive or at least neutral impact on climate change? Um, does, do, does the asset provide essential services to the broader public or does it just serve a privileged minority? Um, if the asset serves another business or supports another business, um, is such business activity is considered sustainable? Um, and does the primary fund manager um, that is managing the asset pursue a, a sustainability or energy transition strategy with this investment? And there have been in the past a few cases where not all these questions could be answered positively. And we then were you know, disciplined and, and, and responsible and decided to pass on that um, respective um, co-investment opportunity, regardless of how uh, attractive and solid the financial performance of the asset was. Um, so if based on this um, initial analysis, we decide that the asset fits into the portfolio from an ESG perspective, we then use our own ESG assessment um, tool to um, do a, a very detailed analysis of ESG related processes, objectives and um, improvement potential at the asset level. Um, the ESG rating of the primary fund manager is also an important element of this analysis, but in most cases, we will actually already have conducted um, that assessment um, in the context of our primary due diligence um, for you know, a primary investment from our fund of funds. So all in all, as asset manager, we have full visibility on the um, portfolio in our co-investment fund and um, on each asset's ESG and sustainability um, criteria. Um, and um, this, uh, we hope, will um, allow us in the not too distant future to classify the fund as an Article 8 uh, fund pursuant to the EU's uh, sustainable um, finance disclosure regulation. Mm -hmm.